My name is Paul Goldsmith from the Burmad Applications Division. In this video, we're going to talk about commissioning and maintaining the Burmad PRV pressure reducing station. This pressure control station should be used where the upstream pressure needs to be reduced to the downstream consumer requirements. Before we begin, I'd like to present the major components of this station. When the upstream isolation valve is open, water first encounters the main strainer, trapping any debris or foreign objects. The water then enters the Burmad 720 pilot operated reducing valve that allows us to adjust the downstream pressure to the exact pressure requirement. At this point, if the downstream isolation valve is open, the water will go on to the consumer. Also in this installation, we have two pressure gauges, upstream and downstream of the 720 pressure reducing valve. Commissioning procedures should be performed when initially opening and operating a station, either for the first time as a new installation or after intrusive system maintenance. Before operating the system for the first time, it is imperative to flush the pipelines. This ensures that the system is free from any debris that could cause damage or even render it inoperable. After flushing, ensure that the main strainer and valves control loop filters are clean. Next, observe the station's installation and make sure that all parts are firmly secured and in place. Proceed by verifying that the upstream and the downstream isolation valves are closed and that you have a typical upstream pressure. Now, open the ball valves at the pressure reducing valves control trim. Make sure that the service valves on all the pressure gauges are open. Note that the pilot level of the pressure reducing valve has been set at the factory. This level is the set downstream pressure of the station. You can check the factory level by reading the label on the pilot cover. Before introducing flow to the station, you need to make sure that its preset pressure level is compatible with your downstream pressure requirements. If this is the case, you're fine. Otherwise, you'll need to adjust the pilot to the required level. If you need to adjust the pilot, all you need to do at this point is to prepare for it by completely unscrewing the pilot's adjustment screw until it becomes loose. Again, this step is only necessary if you need to adjust the unit's downstream pressure level. All right, now slowly fully open the upstream isolating valve to fill the station with water. Proceed by partially opening the downstream isolating valve. At this stage, if you haven't released the pilot's adjustment screw, the consumer's line connected to the station will fill in a slow and controlled manner. All you need to do now is to check that the downstream pressure is compatible with your requirements. And when pressure has stabilized, continue to fully open the downstream isolation valve. On the other hand, if you prepared for pressure calibration by releasing the pilot adjustment screw of the reducing valve, water won't flow through the station. The reason is that in this case, the main pressure reducing valve will have closed shortly after introducing flow to the station. Now, let's calibrate the downstream pressure to the desired level. Note that the calibration cannot be done without flow. To simulate actual conditions, you should have a typical consumer line open while calibrating. This should get you an average system flow rate. If this is not achievable, a minimal flow rate will suffice, though not ideal. Begin the pressure calibration process by slowly turning the pilot adjustment screw clockwise until you hear the valve opening or feel a resistance at the pilot's adjustment screw. At this point, the downstream consumer's pipeline will start to fill. When the consumer's pipeline is full, slowly turn the adjustment screw clockwise to increase the downstream pressure. Do this while monitoring the downstream pressure gauge until you reach the required pressure. To reduce downstream pressure, follow the same process but in this case, turn the adjustment screw counterclockwise. Once you have reached the desired downstream pressure, close the pilot adjustment screw locking nut and replace the protective cover. Whether or not you perform recalibration, the next step is to remove any residual air from the pressure reducing valve's control loop and chamber. This ensures a more stable and positive pressure control. To vent air from the valve's control loop, Loosen the tube eye bolt attached to the valve cover at the highest point of the valve's control chamber. You may notice air exiting the eye bolt. As soon as you get a flow of water without air, retighten the tube fitting eye bolt. 
Now let's discuss maintenance procedures for the Burmad PRV pressure reducing station. Note that your schedule for preventative maintenance depends on the actual conditions of use and the station's environment. Here we discuss a schedule suited to a valve operating under average conditions. On a weekly basis, perform a visual inspection of the station and check for leaks or external damage. In addition, observe the unit's pressure gauges to make sure that the pressures upstream and downstream are as they should be. Once a year, close both the upstream and downstream isolation valves and clean the main strainer and the valve control loop filter. Every three to five years, inspect the internal condition of the pressure reducing valve. Now let's summarize what we covered today. In this video, you learned how to commission and maintain a Burmad PRV pressure reducing station. You saw how to prepare the station for first time use and how to calibrate its downstream pressure to meet your specific requirements. We at Burmad hope you find this information useful and invite you to contact us with any questions or issues you encounter. Thanks for watching.